another month means another bullet journal setup and I am so excited for this plan with me. Just starting off with the cover page, I'm coming in with my watercolor paper. I am going to be using acrylic paints. I found that there is no difference in watercolor and acrylic paint on here, so let me know if you are an expert down below if this is an okay thing to do. On my paints here, I have three different colors. I have a sap green hue, a medium yellow cadmium hue, as well as titanium white. Those three colors combined together are going to give me this light, beautiful sage green color, which I am covering the entire watercolor paper with. For me, I had no circle drawer stencil thing like that so i grabbed a cup on my desk and used the bottom of it to make these circles on my page what these are going to be for is all of the flower petals i don't want them to go outside a certain length so i just put a little x in the center and came in with a stencil not a stencil, a stipple brush that I actually created myself because the one that I have that is actually a stipple brush, I it's a little too big. So I made one from a paintbrush that I never actually end up using. Here I came in with a yellow color just for the center part of that flower and then a burnt sienna paint tone as well just to add in some shading on the outside. Now for my petal leaves, like I said, I wanted to make sure it had very similar petal lengths and what I did to do that is I created the dot on the center closest to that little circle we created and then one on that outer pencil line. This is going to help me make sure that my petals are going in the right direction and that is because I can't switch the page around since I taped it down with my washi tape. That is going to make sure that all of my petals are relatively the same shape, size, and length. Now, I do have some flowers coming out close to the edge. And what I did for that is I just pretended that I drew my dot to where the petal would end. And I did that for all of the different circles that I created on this page. What I wanted to do too is add a second layer. So you see with my first layer, I left a little space in between each petal. Well, that is because I'm coming back in and I'm adding a second layer. This is going to help make the flower look a little fuller, but it is also going to help add a little bit of shading and texture over top. Because I watered my acrylic paint down a lot, I don't necessarily need to go back in and add in grays or anything like that because that green tone kind of seeps through a little bit. I'm moving on to adding in the leaves now. And what I did for that is I came in with a liner brush, really wispy and just threw in lines anywhere there was a blank space. Coming in and thickening up that stem for those leaves. I just started at the top and ended up creating, I would say, I think it's like a almond, maybe a teardrop shape if you're looking for something to reference a little bit better. And I alternated the side that the leaf was on, left or right. I did end up making this page two times. So if you are recreating this, have one page going, wait for it to dry, come back in for the next layer and so on and so forth. One thing that I noticed on my second draft is that I actually liked the leaves coming over top of the flowers a little bit more. So that's something to keep in mind if you are testing this out as well. The leaves over the flower petals look beautiful. I did want the space in behind to be filled up a little bit more, so I thought, why not spend a little time doing dots? Now, as pretty as this looks, it does take a little bit of time to do. So if you want to reduce the number of dots that you're using, make the petals bigger or the leaves have a bit more on your page. For this, I just came in with a larger dot and then grabbed the excess paint to create smaller dots around it. And I did this all across the page. It was so satisfying when it came to an end and I had the dots all complete. I just put a show, podcast, whatever on in the background to make the dots a lot better to do. Peeling off that washi tape, I am going to glue it into my journal. Now I cut it down to size and I am putting it in with my crafter's tape. But what you can notice is on the right hand side of the page, I actually have this little white strip and that is going to be for a Dutch door. Now I had made one, two, three cuts, I'm pretty sure it was, because I'm going to have my calendar in there. But on that third page, what I am doing is coming in with that darker green color 
to have as a backdrop. What I'd like it to look like is this with my July word over top. And since I already colored it all dark green, I'm gonna need to come in and pencil out on a separate piece of paper my July title. So what I did is I used my dot grid notebook, which I have shown you how to create just in my different dot grid guide video. I'll have that one linked below. Came in with my Tombow pen, colored it in, and then cut it out to shape. I did shuffle it around on my page a little bit to make sure everything was evenly spaced, but then used my crafter's tape to glue it in. Next up is my monthly overview. Now I wanted to have kind of a page where it was not a calendar, but I could still see what was going on in my month, both my goals, my project deadlines, things like that. So this is how that page got created. If you can guess what this is going to be, you are the winner. It is a mini calendar. It is a staple in my plan with me, so I feel like. So I'm coming in and using my good old washi tape trick to make sure that I have some nice clean edges when I am painting in there. It is quicker for me, it is less of a mess, and I get such a satisfying clean line. That top box is going to be dark for the calendar and then these two lighter colored greens, I'm coming in with that same dot technique I did on the front cover page, just in behind the flowers. For the calendar, I'm keeping it simple, just adding in a little bit of white with my jelly roll. I did consider using my Archer and Olive Acrylograph paint marker, I just couldn't find it. so paint marker over top might be a little bit easier for you. If you are interested in buying anything from Archer and Olive, their journals I absolutely love. I do have a discount code for 10% off that you can use at checkout using Create with Kate 10. For my business deadlines, how I created that was coming in just with a separate piece of paper from that Dutch door cutout with my Tombow Food and Noscape brush tip pen. And I ended up doing the dainty little lettering that I have so much come in love with recently. I am cutting that out just using my scissors really close to the word. So it ends up looking like little squiggles around each of the word. And I did that both for my business deadline and goals heading that will be on this page. For this, I just ended up gluing it down with my crafter's tape and I came in with my Tombow N85 brush pen. I use this in my mid-year 2022 setup and absolutely love it. It is a nice, neutral, warm tone gray that I really think fits in well with this theme. Onto my calendar page, I needed to try something different. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that came out of my mouth because I have been so obsessed with my two page monthlies, which I have chatted about in a lot of my plan with me's. But because I am working for myself now, I need to try and find something a little bit better to organize both my personal and professional life. What I did is the exact same heading technique with the light green and those lovely white dots and came over top with the two categories for personal and for my YouTube and blog. Here I am going to be hosting just really everything that needs to go along with those two categories. The one thing that I will say, if you are creating anything in paint in your bullet journal, use thin layers. That is something that I kind of struggled with at the beginning, but quickly learned because my patience was not all about waiting for my paint to dry. I am just labeling that 1 to 31 on both the left and right hand side of the page and then filling in every other line with my Tombow brush pen, basically just so I can see things a little bit better. Flipping over to the next page is the exact same layout. The only thing that's different is my Instagram heading. What I did because this covers two pages, I went in and I cut my Instagram title in half. That might sound a little bit weird, but it's going to make folding your bullet journal just a little bit easier. On to my gratitude log. I absolutely love having this in my bullet journal along with my reflection tracker, which you'll just see a little bit later on. I did end up doing the same little green and dots just for the top and used my washi tape trick just to make sure all of those lines are nice and crisp. I cannot get over how satisfying it is pulling that off. I did want to create some flowers on this page, so I ended up adding in those yellow dots, that brown little outside on all of them, and blending it together with my stipple brush. 
What I noticed though is I wanted to not have that green background that I had on the front cover. So I needed to adjust a little bit with my paint. Obviously I am making white flowers. White flowers on a white background <laughs> might not necessarily stand out. So how I got around this was adding in a little bit of that green, light green tone into my white paint. It did add a little bit of a darker, deeper white, more of an off-white, I guess, would be a better explanation of that. So those little flowers stood out on the page. Because I felt like I was missing a bit of green, I came in with my liner brush and added that dark green in, but still felt like I was missing a little bit more. So I just went for it and filled in the entire border in dark green. But sometimes that's what you have to do and I absolutely love it. I did leave every other line open for this gratitude tracker because I like writing down more than one thing. I like having the option to have space and having a two-page gratitude tracker is just a must for me. I filled in every odd numbered line and that is about it for this one. My walking tracker is also, I would say, a staple in my bullet journal in the last few months. Well, last, I think, all of 2022. But what I needed to do was kind of refocus again on why I have it in my journal really understanding is it adding value to my life or not. And the purpose behind me having this tracker is to walk, yes, but to walk more. So I looked at what I had and I kind of adjusted that. For the layout, I ended up adding in my washi tape and needed to use my X-Acto knife to cut out some of the edges because I wanted to paint on the outside of this border. So what I did is I just cut off the excess washi tape, those little ends that you would use when you rip it off of the roll to make it a little bit easier when I'm painting it in. I don't have to necessarily do that for this centerpiece because I'm not coloring it in on the outside. But on the edges here, you can see I am coming in on the outside of that tape. If I didn't end up cutting it out with my X-Acto knife, I would have very bumpy looking lines. And once everything is dry, I did end up coming in with those dots. Again, I would recommend a podcast, an audible book, something like that to get you in the mood for painting lots of dots. I came in with my walking tracker header and my crafter's tape and just glued it down. I used the exact same process as before with my Dutch door paper leftovers to create that heading. This is going to be where I am tracking my walking. I wanted to make it look like a bit of a board game and I came in with this rectangular box and every number that I fill in is going to be one space on the board. What I wanted to do was really see how much I was walking over my goal. And for this month, my goal is to walk about 6,000 steps. I was looking at how much I was walking before and I averaged about 5,000-ish steps a day. So I wanna push that. I wanna see if I can go further. That right-hand side is just for a business brain dump, but now my reflection tracker. Here is where I'm going to be reflecting, obviously because of the name, on my life each week. This has been so helpful for me to see where I am in life and really refocus and pivot when my brain is not doing what I want it to do. Last month in my June plan with me, I ended up asking myself the question, what brought you joy? And it was so interesting to see what that was, but I noticed a lot of the stuff that I was writing down on that reflection tracker area was very similar to the things I was grateful for during the day. So one thing I wanna do this time around is just switch it up a little bit. So instead of asking me what brought you joy, I'm going to be asking myself what brought you stress. That way, ideally, what is going to happen is I can see what is stressing me out, what I can change, and then have less stress. That is the plan. Hopefully it is a go. I will let you know how it goes in my August plan with me next month. On the right hand side, I just came in with my jelly roll pen and added in weeks one, two, three, four, and five. And that's about it for this reflection tracker. 
Last but not least is my weekly spread. And I think I have found a spread that is really keeping me productive, keeping me accountable, and removing all of those tasks that I feel like I have to get done, but not necessarily a priority. On the left-hand side, I am creating an events tracker. So each day is getting one of these light green circles. And I'm going to be putting in here the things that are specifically dedicated towards my business. Things like when I need to post on YouTube, Instagram, my blog, when I need to have things like products done for my shop, all of that stuff that I need to make sure is getting accomplished each week. To finish off this side, I ended up just labeling it in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way to Sunday using my Micron pen in the size 08. On those Dutch door tabs, I'm coming in with my washi tape just to create different boxes for each day of the week. I'm using that darker green color just to have these boxes colored in and then coming over top of that with whatever day it is. So for these two ones, it's just Monday and Tuesday. So I taped that in using my crafter's tape. Underneath both of these, I did end up adding in the number of the week because if I don't have it, my month just kind of flies by and I really do forget what day it is, what I need to get done, and all of that jazz. Everything else for my weeklies look very similar. If you're interested on how to fill this out, come check out my Instagram. I'm going to be showing you how to fill it out in a reel and how it's really helped benefit my life. Now, remember when I said you needed two of those paintings at the beginning? Here is why. I'm gluing it into the back of my book just as a decorative piece, but that is really it. Here is just a quick flip through of what we did today together. And if you've watched up until this point of the video, make sure to put a green leaf emoji just in your comment below. And if you want to see more videos, make sure to stay tuned for next week where I'm going to be walking through my bullet journal flip through.